Yo, what's good everyone? The NHL season is finally back, and today I'm going to be breaking down some of my favorite DraftKings plays for the opening night three game slate. Let's dive right into it. And what I'm going to do here in this video is give you a high-level overview of my cheat sheet, breaking down a couple of line stacks that I like for this three-game slate, as well as some of my favorite individual plays. We'll then wrap it up there with three low-priced options or sub-4K forward plays. But folks, I cannot recommend enough joining the free Discord channel that I have. We now have over 700 people in that Discord talking multiple different sports for DraftKings, as well as their favorite sports bets, and a lot of people will be discussing this NHL slate. If you want to join that Discord, there's a link to do so in the description below, as well as in the pinned comment below. With that being said, let's dive into this cheat sheet here. We're going to kick it off with a couple of line stacks that I like, and even though it is just a three-game slate, there's a handful of different line stacks that I think we could start with our lineup. Another big reason why I need to join the Discord, because I'll be discussing those things in there. But you can see the two lines that I'm highlighting are that first line for the Boston Bruins, and that second line for the Utah Hockey Club. Now, before I dive into either one of those line stacks, I want to mention on these smaller slates here, two, three, four, five games, we need to find ways to make our lineups unique. And we can usually do that by stacking up second and third lines or even doing a full power play stack. For example, I might stack up this first line here for the Boston Bruins with Lindholm, Zaka, and Pasternak, mix in Brad Marchand and Charlie McAvoy as well, doing a full number one power play stack for the Boston Bruins. And a big reason I might want to do that here is because the Florida Panthers took the second most minor penalties in the NHL last season, and I really don't see that changing this year either. They're always in the penalty box. So, I like this first line here, just mentioned these three guys, very affordable, all up on that first line in number one power play, and a solid matchup here against a team that likes to take a lot of penalties. Now, I think a lot of people are gonna be on Florida in general, being that they're defending Stanley Cup champions. Another reason I kinda like Boston on this smaller slate too. And then the other line stack that I got here is that second line for the Utah Hockey Club, Cooley centering McBain and Gunther. Cooley and Gunther looked really good in the preseason together. There's a lot of chemistry between these two. Pretty affordable line stack here as well that allows you to do a lot with the rest of your lineup. But the Utah Hockey Club is one of those teams where I could stack up either one of those top three lines and again, maybe even just target their number one power play because the Chicago Blackhawks had the sixth worst penalty kill in the NHL last year, hitting at just 76% rate. Now folks, before we dive into some of my favorite individual plays here, if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. We just hit over 4,100 subs on the channel and it's growing by the day, so make sure you're a part of that. All right, now diving into some of these individual plays here, we're going to kick it off with the forwards. First guy that I got is Connor Bedard of the Chicago Blackhawks, someone who plays up on that first line, number one power play. Super young kid who is super talented, and I kind of like that first line with him, Bertuzzi, and Tara Vinen. We could even stack up that number one power play for Chicago because Arizona wasn't much better on the penalty kill last year either, hitting at a 76% rate, eighth worst in the NHL. But Bedard, outside of Pasternak, he's the best pure shooter on this line late, and I do like him at that price of 7300 I also like the price here for Pavel Bushnevich. I can't say I'm in love with that St. Louis Blues team to start this season. Their lineup doesn't look super strong in my opinion, but two guys offering some really nice value on this slate are Bushnevich and Falk from the St. Louis Blues. I'll talk about Falk here in just a couple of minutes, but Bushnevich playing on that second line and number one power play for St. Louis. And then we're going back to some Utah guys here. I mentioned we could probably stack up any one of their top three lines. I really like that third line as well with Kroos and Maselli. You got Doan on that line as well. He's a little too expensive in my opinion. I know he had kind of a breakout year towards the end of last season, but... I lean towards Maselli and Kraus here, love their price in the 4K range, play on that third line and second power play together, two guys who will definitely be in my lineups. And then Shane Wright, he's going to play on that third line for the Seattle Kraken, plays on their number two power play, finished the season really strong himself last year, he's been an AHL guy for the most part in his professional career, but uh, had a really good preseason as well, and again at $4,300, I like the value there. All right, now moving on to the defenseman here. First guy that I got is Charlie McAvoy. Now on a smaller slate like this, I'm not going to be afraid to spend up for defenseman either. He's the most expensive defenseman at this price here. 
here, which really isn't too expensive at all. You're going to be spending up for guys like Kale McCarr this season in the 8K range. Seth Jones is also in play if you want to stack up the Chicago Blackhawks power play. But McAvoy, outside of being up on that number one power play, is a pretty well-rounded defenseman too, who can rack up DraftKings points by blocking shots. Justin Falk, I love the opportunity. Kind of talked about that already. Considering the price of $4,600, this is a guy who's going to play around 22 minutes in this game, play up on that number one power play, likely sprinkles into the penalty kill as well, and he's got a read ridiculous shot, someone who can definitely find the back of the net. As far as value goes, Sergeyev here, the Utah Hockey Club, is offering tremendous value. His price is only going to go up this season. Another defenseman who's going to play 20 plus minutes in this game, up on the number one power play and on the penalty kill. And then as far as value goes, I did like Alex Vlasic of the Chicago Blackhawks in the 3K range, but Nikita Zadorov of the Boston Bruins really stuck out to me at $2,900. He is not going to play on the power play, but he should get big minutes on the penalty kill and he can definitely block three shots in this game, getting you that three-point DraftKings bonus. Hey, and then I got a couple of goaltenders there for you. Now, for those of you who have watched my NHL DraftKings videos in the past, you know what I'm about to say, but if you're new to this video here, basically what I want to mention is if you have a smaller slate like this, right, two, three, four, five games, you're building your roster around your goaltender, and what I mean by that is you don't want to beat yourself, right? So if I play Philip Grubauer here at the Seattle Kraken, I probably don't want to roster a bunch of St. Louis Blues in my lineup because in order for the St. Louis Blues to have a big game, they need to have a bunch of shots on net and Grubauer needs to save all those shots. And that could happen, right? But the odds are is it's probably not going to work in your favor. So I'm highlighting Grubauer here, the Kraken. I got Corpusalo there of the Boston Bruins. I like Peter Morazic though, the Chicago Blackhawks at $7,200. And I even like Ingram in that game as well. It really comes down to your roster construction. So if I'm playing Grubauer here, who I do like for the Kraken, then I'm probably going to roster a bunch of guys outside of St. Louis. I like Corpusalo here as well because I mentioned earlier, the Florida Panthers are probably going to be super popular on this three game slate they just won the stanley cup they got a bunch of talent in their top six that kind of makes me lean towards Corpusalo here at $7,400. He is someone who could win this game, see 30-plus shots in this game, and considering the price, I like that in tournament. So it really comes down to your roster construction. Again, another reason to join the Discord, because we'll talk through those things. And as always, going to wrap up this video here with three low-priced options or sub-4K forward plays. Now, value is everywhere on this three-game slate. That will get worked out as the season goes along, but a lot of really Really good plays here below the 4k range highlighted a couple of those already but one guy that I want to mention and kind of name dropped him too already was Taylor Teravine and the Chicago Blackhawks coming over from the Carolina Hurricanes back to his original team actually should see a lot of opportunity up on that first line playing with Bedard he's a natural passer get Bedard the puck as much as possible you'll rack up assists because he's a natural shooter and goal scorer so I like him at that price of $3,900 I'd like him even more if he plays up on the number one power play but right now it looks like he's slotted in on the number two power play Matty Beneers there the Seattle Kraken plays up on that first line and number one power play for his club looking for a bounce back year after kind of slumping his sophomore season and then Barrett Hayton speaking of guys who need to show up this year he absolutely needs to for the Utah Hockey Club he's playing up on that first line with Schmaltz and Keller. They're putting them on the number one power play to start the season as well. Good price there at $3,200. A lot of value for sure considering the opportunity, but this kid needs to perform or he's probably going to be down on that third line before we know it. All right, everyone, that is going to wrap up this video here for today. As always, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch the content here on this channel. If you could like this video and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. Let's have ourselves a great day here, folks, and let's win some money on this three-game NHL slate.